Okay, guys, so this is one year off testosterone and exactly one year. It's a mixed bag. It really is. Um, I'm going to have to really think about a few things in the next week or so. So white blood cell count, slightly elevated, allergies and such. 4.8, though, isn't bad at all. RBC, red blood cell count, hemoglobin and hematocrit have come up a little bit. Um, basically 44 on hematocrit almost 15 on hemoglobin I'm, I'm happy with that for being you know natural and off everything um my eosinophils are always a little elevated due to allergies so that's nothing major to worry about I mean, everything else is in the normal range then we got glucose 87 you know that's not great i'd like it to be closer to 80 so that's something that could be improved through diet um, 87 is nothing too serious, nothing to worry about. But like I said, you don't want to, you don't really want to get in over 90. I know the, the reference range goes up to 99, but I would say 90 is a cutoff where you should start being somewhat concerned. Uh, BUN 21, it says high, but that's really not bad at all for training and such. Now I will say that this panel was done, um, with four days off from training beforehand to try to get a little more accurate results with testosterone levels and such. Creatinine 1.05, that's quite good. And I'm about 200, I was about 228 pounds when I did this test. So creatinine, BUN, all that, the kidney functions are skewed due to muscle mass, but they're still really good. So that's pretty, that's pretty nice to see. Obviously a cystatin C test would show a more accurate reading, but I think my kidneys are in pretty good shape. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, a few other markers here. AST, ALT are your liver enzymes, 2931, typical. Uh, they're usually around 25, 30 range. So that's that's nothing out of the out of the normal range for me. Cholesterol, pretty high here for me. So triglycerides 96, that's higher than I would like them. I think the last test I had done. Um, it was from Quest. I was like in the 60s. HDL 52, that's good. And then LDL 151, quite high. So before this test, a couple weeks before this uh, this blood work, I stopped taking Resuvastatin, or, which is Crestor statin, because I wanted to see if my test levels, I didn't want my test levels being affected too much. So I dropped the statin out a few weeks ago, and I'm just, I've just been on a Zetamibe 10 milligrams every day. Now, I had a client who was on a Zetamibe, and his... LDL readings didn't budge at all. And this makes me wonder if the azetamibe is not being utilized in myself as well. It's probably something I will discontinue taking because it appears that on the past blood panel where I was at a 70 LDL, it may have just been the resuvastatin bringing everything down as far as that's concerned. And I don't know if the azetamibe was really doing anything because with azetamibe isolated here as the only variable, LDL shoots right back up to where it was, and as do triglycerides. So it just makes me wonder if zetamibe isn't utilized in everyone. Something to think about. Um, thyroid panel, 3.4 TSH, which is actually pretty high. Um, and the higher your TSH is, I think I believe that means the more underactive the thyroid is. Now, I have a history of hypothyroidism in my family, so that would make sense. Um, obviously, not a severe case, but... My TSH has never been below about 2.9 or 3. It's never been lower than that. Whereas most clients, when I see blood work panels come back, their TSH is in the 1, somewhere in the 1 range. So slightly underactive thyroid there. FSH and LH after a year, 6.9 FSH, 4.3 LH. Um, LH obviously signals for testosterone production from the, from the pituitary gland. And then FSH is responsible for sperm production from the pituitary gland. Now, the real fun part, which y'all came for, testosterone 288. So this is a little disheartening because in April, my testosterone was 4, 409. That was the highest level I've achieved since coming off. And then in July on my next panel, it was down to 361. And now it's down to 288. So it's been going down since April. And this was after, you know, like I said, I took four days off from training beforehand, 12 hours fasted, um, dropped a statin out a few weeks ago. 
and we're still at 288. So that makes me have to, uh, you know, have to think about a few things because obviously that's not ideal. I'm, I'm kind of amazed that I'm lifting what I am now, but it's just, it's not pleasant. <laughs> and then the free test 10.4, the scale for that goes from about nine to 25. So not good at all. Um, yeah, that's after one year after taking stuff for nine years. Hemoglobin A1C 5.3. Um, I believe that's pretty good. It's not even in the pre-diabetes range, somewhere in the middle of the reference range. And then estradiol 12. My estrogen hasn't rebounded over 15 since I came off. So my estrogen is just not rebounding at all, which you want some estrogen. Like ideally, I'd want that to be in the 30, 40 range, um, I wish my test levels would make my test levels higher, but that hasn't been the case. Vitamin D, I take 10,000 IUs a day routinely. So I'm at 82. Uh, that's the highest I've ever seen as far as that's concerned for myself. So like I said, pretty, pretty mixed bag, pretty big mixed bag here as far as the results, but, um, supplements I was on during this, I've been on 10,000 IUs, vitamin D3, 10 milligrams of Zetamide. And then, uh, I was taking three pills of the kidney support from Leviathan nutrition as well. So I believe every time I've gotten that checked, after taking the kidney support, uh, my kidney functions look better. So I believe that works. And then I'm trying to think, oh, 40 milligrams telemisartan. I've also been on. That's about it, guys. Uh, there's your one-year update. Appreciate y'all.